Gafu Inc. proudly presents. Welcome. This is Ronnie Figueroa, also known as DJ Labuga. We are here with the Garifuna Heritage Foundation United, also known as Gafu, as we welcome every one of you to our new workshop. This is the traditional Garifuna cooking workshop. So we want to welcome you into our house, into our kitchen, as we learn through video how to make hudutu, darasa, and bundiga to be able to preserve it for the new generations. Thank you and welcome. Well, hello and welcome. My name is Theodore Mark Martinez, and today we're bringing you authentic Garifuna flavored food. I mean, we have Vilma Lamb in the kitchen who are hooking up this tasty food. You know, bring you some culture, bring you some flavor, bring you some authenticity, bring you some, some vibe, some good style. So we're coming to you from Los Angeles, California, bringing you Garifuna culture at its best. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. These are the ingredients to make kudut. Green and ripe plantains. For the fish, it could be kingfish, red snapper, or barracuda. You could also add shrimp or pigtail, coconut milk, sea salt, and black pepper. Seafood seasoning, okra, habanero pepper. It could be frying oil, such as olive oil, corn oil, canola oil, or coconut oil. This, that's what this is supposed to do at home. Mm -hmm. Most people, they just mash it down and like peel it off. Mm -hmm. And then they tend to like use it to hold, but I chop it up. Miss Lambie, what are you prepping there? What is that? Salt and salt. This is, this is a it's black pepper, salt, and a fish season. Seasoning. Okay. That's to season your season fish. The fish with it. They have different clothes for different activities. Yeah. My cousin here was a queen, so she would know. She had the gown there, so that's yeah. just a gown. <laughs> Most of the time, people they use that mostly when they work cooking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it's and not like. Most of you see them tying their way because if you're doing a lot of work, you kind of like one on back, so you see most of them tie the back and strength. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm cutting up onions, garlic, and bell peppers to put in, well, not bell pepper, just onion and garlic for the, for the hudut, for the gravy for the hudut. Yeah, for, for a girl from a speaking audience, can you please elaborate? Give a garlic, luma, sabuya, lumi nitro, lilia, iro, tu hudut. Why do you have it larger than the other way when you had it all cut, just fine pieces? Okay, just gonna, this is just to go into the gravy for the sauce, mm -hmm. but when I cut it small earlier, it was for the darasa. You don't really want to see it, you want to like eat it, taste it, right. but not actually see those big lumps in there, so right. you chop it up. See, Ms. Vilma, striking some of the stuff, because you don't want to leave a, a dirty kitchen when you're done. So she'll get rid of some of the stuff she already worked on while she's watching the food and preparing for the next step. Is that right, Miss Vilma? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Any of this stuff going to be used mm -hmm. again right now, today? Uh, no. Probably, yes. I'll use this ball again. Okay. When the planting is finished, I'll put it into this ball. All right. 
So, so I, I can watch that. You okay, thank you. I appreciate that, Mark. Okay. Anything else? No. That's anything good. for anything? No, that's good. Is there anything you're looking forward to and anything you'd be more cautious about as you work? Any elements that will have an effect on how your food turns out? No, everything is okay. Everything you want to keep everybody out of the kitchen though, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, but what did I mention her masterpiece? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm laughing because <laughs> this is my first time cooking in a crowd. Even when I cook at home, my friends would be in the kitchen with me, but I'll have a way to move my side to do so. I have some secret recipe that I don't want nobody hey. to know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why, <laughs> that's why I'm laughing now, but it's okay. <laughs> I don't think anybody in the so is going to go back and cook. What are you working on? Right? As you, as they go you, get it already prepared and eat it, right? <laughs> so can you explain to us what you're doing right here? I'm cleaning some shrimps now. All right. We're going to put the shrimps again. This is optional in the hudot. You don't have to do the shrimp in there. Mm. It's just, you know, the fish is just enough. Gourmet, gourmet hudot, y'all. Yeah. Gourmet hudot. <laughs> but at, today we're going to put some fish uh, and some shrimp in it. Some people put other stuff in it. Some people put conks in it, conk. Mm. Some people put, um, we have, we, you know, we like pigtails, so some people would put pigtails in it. Yeah. I like that. And um, crab shell. Crab shell. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Mm. Some crab shell. And different things. But like I said, it's, all that is optional. The, the fish is just enough, you know, with the gravy and the plantain. Do you try not to make it too overdone you don't want to put too much fish or too much shrimp and too much lobster you don't want to make it too much where you don't taste the real authentic authenticity you could never put too much fish well not fish but but i'm talking about but shrimp you know uh <clears throat> today i'm going to put do the fish and the shrimp together okay but normally sometimes you would prefer to cook the gravy and do a second part of gravy with the shrimp by itself, the seafood. Yes. Because that's people that are allergic to shellfish. You know, and don't be it. shy for a Garfinist speaking audience. You can say things in Garfin also, if you know them, you know but exactly. You know. So I know you're kind of <laughs> shy, but just let it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I, like I was saying to Mark, that some people don't are allergic to shellfish like crabs, shrimps and stuff. So if you're going to be cooking for a variety of people, you would prefer to separate the gravy with the fish by itself mm -hmm. and do the other gravy with the seafood, you know. Mm -hmm. And so for a Garfina speaking audience in Honduras and different parts of Central America, how would, how would you explain that? How would you say that? Okay, I would say, the Babo Gune Iro Tuhuduto, I must be to be Suru leader. A Babo Gune Singi Suru, La Uduro. I am Mutu. We got to do the um, Isuru home. So, look at La, Mamos La, Beda, Samina Lua, Lira, Abmichu Bani, I'm Babu Guni Singu. Right. The way we interpret. Yeah, so what, what was briefly said was that you don't have to put the shrimp in there. Some people might be allergic to it, or some people might not like it. So, you don't have to put it in there. Briefly, pretty much what we said. <laughs> right, and the fish. Are we, we, the lemon is in there. We pretty much know what the lemon for, but can you please expa explain to us why you have the lemon with the shrimp as you clean it? You never see, you know, usually don't see people have, you know, don't see people have the lemon in there when they're doing work, but you have it in there. Can you explain to us why it's essential or why you have it in there? Well, for me, I put the lemon in there to kill some of the odor of the seafood. All right. See, we come with a strong odor, and you don't want to smell it. They say once fish smells, it's not good. Yeah. But that's not true. Fish just automatically smells. All right. So you put some lemon juice in it, and it kind of kills down the, you know. All right. So are you going to hold back a little bit? You have your own secret recipe. Are you going to let us know <laughs> that, you know, this is what I'll do. I'll let you know once in a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> I add this to my food, 
Like I noticed you use olive oil earlier when you fried the fish and not regular oil. Is that, that makes a difference? Well, now it does make a difference now because of health reasons now we are trying to use olive oil. Right. But before, you could also use the canola oil, like I see Ronnie's canola oil. Right. That's also good for the heart. So that would have been good too. Good you for know. the heart, huh? Yes, good for the heart. Canola oil, <laughs> good for the heart. It's like a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right. So should we keep our eyes on everything else as this goes along? Yes, we could see how everything is going. The planting is boiling. Once it starts boiling, more or less like, you know, 15 minutes and it's finished. All right. You know. You and the if planting. the water is boiling for the darasa, so that's, watch your hand, Mark. Okay. It's not but I'm going to start putting it in. Why are, you, why are you getting the onions out? What are you preparing now? Okay. Um, earlier, like you see, when I, I did the purple onions in the darasa, it gives it some color. Mm -hmm. And you could use any onions that you want for the, um, that would be for the gravy for the hudut. Right. I prefer the brown onions, but we could work with the white one, you know. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to dice it like I dice the one for the, um, for the um, darasa. You could, you could kind of like see this. You could see the onion in the gravy. It doesn't matter. Oh, it so depends on how you want it, you right. know. So is that the reason Chunky, why? Like that. That's the reason why. What? Why you prefer the brown onions? Uh, the brown onions are stronger. It has more right. flavor in it. Okay. It, it depends on what you're trying to make. Right. If you're trying to make a sauce, you would use the white onion. It depends on what you're making. Okay. But the brown onions come with a different flavor. So, so Miss Vilma, as you make these food. I know you bring back memories and, and good memories and bad memories. Cause you know I have memories with you way back. <laughs> so what kind of memories these brought back from way back in the villages to living in Belmopan, Belize, and here in America, what these food means to you, especially some of these authentic Garifuna food? I don't really, okay, let me bring see. Bring back mom, of course, Miss Janet Bring Lambie. back my mom. I used to, my mom used to do the cooking at the house. As a matter of fact, I never cooked when I was home. True. I never had to cook. My mom did all the cooking and for all of us. Mm -hmm. And I started practicing to cook after I came to the States. And even my mom was amazed when she came to the house one day and I was cooking. She did she was shocked that I could cook. I could even cook some stuff she don't know how to cook. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, come my mom don't make certain dishes that I would make. And certain dishes she makes. She told me, yours tastes better than me now. <laughs> that means that she could cook, I could cook better than her now, right? She said it in very funny. <laughs> yeah, right. so, but I didn't have to cook. I started cooking here in the States. And I like it, so I practice. If I like something, if I go somewhere, eat something, I don't, I don't limit myself to just very funny food. I like something, I try to figure what they put in it. I know, it gets to, I practice so much that I don't know what happened to my taste, but I'm kind of like, <laughs> tell you what you have in your food. <laughs> By me tasting it, I say, oh, that's what she put, okay. You know, or somebody said, well, I taste something in there. Did you put nutmeg in that thing? Mm -hmm. It was a nutmeg, how you know? Because certain things you don't put nutmeg, but I taste nutmeg in there. Because mm -hmm. I have, like, my taste buds got so smart because I practice a lot of stuff at my house while I'm cooking, you know? Mm -hmm. So that Mark asked me to cook stuff for him. Mm -hmm. To go impress his friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, another so, um, mm -hmm. as this goes on, mm -hmm. what's the, where does the men play a part in this? I know, you know we play a part in doing the fishing and doing the hunting and, and getting the food, helping prepping for the food. Is there any use for us in the kitchen? <laughs> There's always use for you guys in the kitchen. Right, because they have guys that do the cooking in the house. Right, right. The best cooks, these, the best chefs are guys now, right? Right, right. Okay. Thanks, thank you. She said it. <laughs> right. And, and back to memories. Cause we want to we wanna link what's going on now to culture. Why, why we use cassava, why we use certain food back then when we only had certain essential because food to use. The reason, I, the reason why we use a lot of stuff like this because it's easier, you know. Um, I don't want to use the word poor, 
But um, it was easy, you could easily grow your own food. You could just grow it in your backyard and dig it up and then cook it. So it's not like you said, Ben, what am I going to eat today? I don't have No, you will find something in your backyard to eat. You grow everything you could grow. The things that we ate, we used to grow. Right. So, so this, is, this is it right here. Banana, plantain, cocoa. We don't have that here today, but we have like cocoa. Different stuff that we used to plant in the yard. Uh, and you have a glass of wine right here. I know you're talking a lot, so. My throat is dry. Mm -hmm. My throat is dry. Mm -hmm. Something to wet the tongue while she works. <laughs> Um, Again, with the shrimp, I'm peeling off the skin. Some people prefer to just cook it like, but don't you hate eating shrimp and have all that stuff? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. I sure so do. I don't like it. So I usually get all the skins off before I cook it. Even though you'll have bone in the fish, but it's a different feeling with the bone in the fish than the shrimp skin in your mouth, you know? Right. So I don't like that. So that's the reason why I'm doing this. Many conversations been held Chewing the bone in the fishes after, after a nice <laughs> dinner. They sit there and chew the bone. You know how it is. The flavor is right there deep inside the bone. So you sit down and talk and talk and talk <laughs> while you chew on this mm -hmm. bone, which is so filled with flavor. Okay. I hate, to do this. I hate to do this to you, Mark. You know who used to do it? Mark's man chew his bone three times before she threw it. For real? <laughs> oh, she chewed her bone. She enjoys it. Yes. Oh, yes. My sister used to just chew on her bone, chew on her bone. She'll be talking, and when you see, she grab it again, she chew it again on the bone. Mm -hmm. And she just enjoyed doing it, you know? She said, oh, that's where everything is, right in the bone. Right, right in the bone, <laughs> all the flavor. That's when you know it's really cooked through, when the flavor is inside the bone, right? So this going on, let's check again on the pots. We have the plantain still boiling, and we have the... Okay. All right. I could say Mark would be the kind of cook that disturb his cooking. <laughs> you know, leave it so he could do it. Still, uh, we just put it there. You know. Was, was, was that too early? Was that too early? See, it's not even boiling it. Oh no wonder somebody touched the fire. Uh oh. It's low. Okay. Now it's gonna start boiling. And see. So what you gonna open? Nothing. See. It's this. still. Okay. Up the boil. So I guess so. that's why you keep us men out the kitchen most of the time. But yet claim we're the best. Chefs out there. <laughs> so we, we keep we are we are still working on the shrimp. Okay. This is the coconut oil. Um we use a lot of coconut oil when we cook. As a matter of fact, that's what we used to use. Now it's all olive oil now, organic. But when I was growing up, it's we used coconut oil for everything. Everything is coconut oil. You know, once upon a time, they used to say it's not good, it's too much cholesterol. Now, they advertise all the groceries, they have all different kind of coconut oil. Because now we know it's good, but we've been knowing it because we've been mm -hmm. using it. We, 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 we grew up on it. Right. Everything is coconut oil. Coconut in your hair, skin, yes, everything. Yes. Coconut oil. Right. So. I you know, garfeners are trailblazers and a whole lot of stuff. Yep. Yeah. That's right. So we have that. I saw you have some okra there on, in the back. Is there anything we can do with that right now or just leave it right there? Leave it right here. Leave it right here. It's going to go. I'm going to use the okra. You're going to see later what I'm going to do with the okra. I'm not going to say right now what I'm going to do with the okra. You'll see later what I'll do with the okra. Okay. Mm, smells good in here. Okay. So we have this going on. Shrimp okra. Um... As you go along, can you please add a little garf and a flavor to it as you work? Let us know. In, is there a song you will sing as you cook? You know, some, some garf and a song, some... I don't want to hear no R&B, please. You, no just, you, you so. just missed my point. Are you mocking you know I don't sing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, something, somebody, you know, you know, my mom sing and grandma sing and everybody sing. Something will hum along. But what would you think you would hear... I like got from the mother well, to sing and or hum along. Why you say that? I yeah. don't know the saying. I'm not going to fool myself today and try to sing. <laughs> but usually when the guy from the people were doing work, it, it's always, that's when they make songs. You know, right from out there, if they're grading the cassava to make cassava bread, they come up with a tune. You mm. know, and by time, you know, that's when all the songs were made. Either they're at the farm, you know, plowing and stuff. Songs are being made from there. Either it's a church song or it's a... Punta sound like what's showing there. It's just, they just always have music. You know, it's always music. This Dude. one coming with her tune, the other one coming with her tune, and when you look, a melody came, comes out of it. 
See, I know you love to. I know you love to dance. So, do you remember any of those tunes? It's not about dance. Can you hum one for us? Out of the tune. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, you could dance while you cook, right? Can you like shake? <laughs> do you know like you know, just do a little, you know, as you cook, you know, whatever spirit hits you. No, I'm not really an active person People when I cook. People see you dance, I'm okay. Yes, I dance, but when I'm cooking, like I said earlier, right? I said earlier that when I cook, I'm like focused, and I'm quiet when I cook. Right now, all this talking is getting to me too. For real? <laughs> <laughs> well, the talking is for, for, it's for your heritage to pass on. So when you're not here, when we're all not here, someone can look back 50, 100 years from now and say, oh my God, that's Miss Vilma. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, look at her. Okay, that's exactly what she did. Yeah. You know. Well, they sing, see me cooking, things. they're not going to see me singing because I don't know how to sing. Uh-uh. Oh, right. they might see me dancing. I've done a lot of videos dancing, but uh -huh. not while I'm cooking. I really don't, you know. Right. So this would be your downtime, you know, skinny the shrimp, you know. This is, my, I'm, I'm, this is my best time right here. I'm having a good time right now. All right, with me talking? It, no, with you, would, it would be nice if you're quiet now. Um, when I'm cooking, I'm quiet, and I'm just, I could do a lot of stuff. You know, I could come up with 10 meals right here, just cooking from one thing, and just shuffling myself. All right, As long all right. as it's quiet, and everything is like calm, you know? Then I just do my stuff, and if, if I have all the ingredients, and maybe I wasn't planning to make something else, and I said, oh, there goes some yuca over there. I could easily start grating that yuca and make a pudding or something. All right. you know, once I start cooking, I could just cook, you know? Right. But with all that noise and people cook, and they said they have to have music when they vacuum, it's music in their headphones. I can't do I'm, all that distracting. I'm, I'm, I'm say it's all right. <laughs> Jesus. I should have never mentioned dancing and music. <laughs> it's all right. All right. Yeah, I'm just, just like this right here. All right. Cook. Looks good. Oh, it's okay. Thank you. See? While you're talking, the guy sees what is overflowing. Oh. <laughs> the pot. Overflowing, should I do that? You see? If, and if we had a steamer. And how long would, would the food be on the pot? Because you know me, I'll keep on checking. You will about estimate the average of how long. It all depends on what you're cooking and the amount of what you're cooking. Well, what we have because here right, right now. What we have right there shouldn't take too long because it start boiling. So it should be finished in like 45 minutes. 45 minutes. So. Yes. Because you want the banana to really cook. You know, so like 45 minutes. So until then, I might have to have some cassava with some gravy or what should I have a snack? I'm hungry. A snack, you could go and get you a piece of tortilla. <laughs> tortilla. <laughs> Anything with the tortilla. <laughs> All right, tortilla, while I wait for the <laughs> lovely food. Hey, Miss Vilma, you can do things with the extra plantain, right? You, you, can you fry it, or you can make something with it? Okay, like after it's already mashed. Let's say you, you you did a meal and you have leftover plantain. What we used to do back home, we used to um, make it into a into a ball. And we mash it down and then they fry it. But the oil has to be real hot, they don't want it to soak oil. So when it's real hot, you fry it, and again, it gets crisp on outside and moist inside. Oh. So that's what they do with it. You don't throw away nothing. So you do you put anything to it? Do you add anything to it when you fry it? Do you add anything to it? Uh, no. Any of the seasonings or anything like that when you fry it? If you want to, you okay. could, but I don't remember them doing that. But if you want to, it depends again on your taste buds, what you like. 
You know, you taste something, say if you want salt, you could always do it after. But in me, once something's already cooked, no matter how it tastes, I'm gonna eat it that way. I don't put salt and nothing that's already cooked. That's just me. That's me also. Once it's already cooked, that's it. That's how I'm gonna eat it. Man, that's a great job. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Five minutes later. the green bananas so that I could um, make the bundiga and also the derasa out of the same green banana. So I'm going to divide it in two, half for the bundiga, half for the derasa. These are the ingredients to make derasa, green bananas, banana leaves, aluminum foil, red bell peppers, garlic, purple onions, and cooking time is 45 minutes. These stand up in the pot. I'm going to let it stand in there. So why do you so have it standing up? Could, well, so that everything could like stay in there. Once it starts boiling, it starts to come together. Good. And when okay. it looks seem like water would go into the end, any corners of the fall, it would try to get in. So I just let it stand, and plus, you could just throw them in there, but uh, as you see, <laughs> I like stuff neat. I don't like to see, when I'm cooking, I want to like what I see so I could eat what I see, you know? All right. I don't and like you, stuff that's rough, you know? It takes you, away my appetite. I see. <laughs> so and I'm going to just lay it there, so it stands up. It sounds so beautiful when you said that earlier in Garifuna. Can you say what you just said in Garifuna? Explain to us. What you just did and why you did what you did? Abna Ramak de no Daras Lida Duna, Logala, Masera Tag, um, Daras at Lia get foil. Easy to mamma look taramo, the red tabo, the tabo, and once they the loot of a tabo, the better derek the gutungo, a better the gutungo. So that's an Ramak de Banu eater. You better believe it. <laughs> All right, well said, Mr. Malambe. So now, instead of me boiling it, steaming it, we boiling it now because we don't have a steamer. Okay? If we were steaming it, it would have been, we don't see no water because the, the water would have been behind that extra layer pot. How was the fish and, and everything coming along over there, Ms. Vilma? Everything is going good. Everything is go? good. Everything is good. Yes. Well, everything coming along over there. It is swimmingly. All right. <laughs> These are the ingredients to make bundiga, green bananas. For the fish, it could be kingfish, red snapper or barracuda, coconut milk, two cans. Frying oil could be olive oil, corn oil, canola oil or coconut oil, black pepper, salt, garlic, onions, bell peppers for flavor. Cooking time is Put 20 minutes. Put a little bit minutes. of salt in it. And I'm now I'm going to wait for the milk to heat up a little bit before I put the bananas in there. So I'm going to do the same thing with this, just for a little bit, so it could um, heat up. Mm -hmm. 
How long are you going to do this? How long are you going to, you know? Do this? Play, yes. Just until it gets warm. I just the stove, All right. it gets warm. Good. And then this is the banana right here. So how much coconut milk do you, you put in there in, 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 in ratio to the, to the rest of the ingredients? I put um, two cans of coconut milk. Two cans. Mm -hmm. And that's like a family of four, six, eight, or... Okay. Sorry to ask that question, y'all. You see me got that look? That's the auntie look. <laughs> Get your butt out of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> um, this would be enough to feed, you know, Probably like, yeah, yeah, like five, six people depends because we're not here to get full, you know, oh. Mark. <laughs> okay. Took a little bit of everything. So, you know, touch of this, a touch of that, just a little bit of everything. So, you're going to feed how much people here? Yeah, all of us going to get a little bit. A so, scoop. Everybody going to get a scoop. Okay. <laughs> so, for Garfunnel, Garfunnel only speaking mm. audience out there. What would you say, you know, can you add something to it as you prepare this meal? Are you? No, I can't. So what comes to mind? Well, right now... In Garifuna, please. Now, I'm going to go to the house of Bundiga. So, I'm going to go to the house of Bundiga. So, I'm going to go to the house of Bundiga. So, I'm going to go to the house of Bundiga. So, I'm going to go to Mmm. And Lagoba Bay is what? Waiting for? Waiting. I'm just waiting for the stove. No, a girl for, no the, for the pot to get warm uh -huh. and the coconut milk to get hot. You usually want to put the banana in when the coconut is hot so it speed up the process of it start boiling and start cooking. Okay. Cause we're hungry, you know. For real, all this getting ready and getting ready. I'm not sure you just want to say we're enjoying your process. This right here is historical. It's great the way you're, pre you're preparing the food, explaining it. You know, we trust your cooking. We see that you're for real. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Mark. Can I have a plate to go? Sure, Mark. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put right. some black pepper in the, in the coconut milk right now. I'm seasoning the coconut milk with a little bit of salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use what I have in here is garlic, okay. onions, and some red bell peppers. Okay. Again, it's for flavor. I notice it's large. It's large for so we can sink our teeth in it and taste it. Well, this is even smaller than what I did with the um, one for the Hudut. Gravy for the hudut. All right. So it's gonna be in there. So yeah. So that's this right here. All right. So so when it gets hot, I'm gonna um, start scooping. So I'm gonna see, just for the audience' sake, this fish look really well. <laughs> Tastes good, for real. Erica, wherever you at, thank you for the fish. Mm hmm Okay, so I'm waiting. You're waiting. Yeah. All right. Waiting. Is there no way, any other way to prepare this? This is the way? This is the way. Okay. Well, again, let me take that back. They have some folks, when they cook the, um, the bundiga, some season the water and probably like do the same, the onion and garlic and stuff with water. And instead of the coconut milk, they put a little bit of oil in the water instead of using the coconut milk. Again, optional, is how you want to make it. But the real way is the coconut, but no, but... A lot of people seem to back to the to talk about coconut milk and the, the all colors, different stuff. So people start doing it with the, just the water. You know, I I don't 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 give me none if you make it that way. Don't don't offer me now. Me neither. <laughs> no. You know, cause it takes away from it. It takes away from it.
everything that I'm preparing today is the old way, like they would say, old school way. Everything, you know, the only thing that's not from scratch today, away from old school, is because I didn't grate the coconut. Instead, I used the canned coconut milk instead of grating the coconut. Normally, you would um, grate the coconut to do it. Right. Try not to get the fingers caught up and get scratched. Yeah. So now this is it. So now I'm going to start putting in the lumps in there. So. And what's the lumps again for us who just tune in? The lumps is the um, banana. Mm. So these are banana that was great. That, that are great. So okay. I'm just doing like a scoop. And I put it there. Put it into the pot. Normally what I do is I just put enough in the pot, around the pot, and let it, let it boil for a second. The reason why I do it like that is so the ones that I already put in, they don't, you know, incorporate it with each other. So I want to keep them separated. So it could be like, like I said, dumplings, an eye, like one piece, you know, a lump and a lump and a lump. So right now I'm going to leave it like that for a quick second, you know, like, like two, three minutes. So it comes together, start holding up, then I'll put the balance in there. Well, now you know the secret of how to make traditional Garifuna pondiga. 20 minutes later. The Garifuna cooking workshop was documented on Saturday, February 25th, 2017. Traditional Garifuna cooking, a GAFU's Garifuna Arts and Legacy project made possible by the Pathways Funding, California Arts Council grant. Hosted by Garifuna actor Theodore Mark Martinez. Featuring respected Garifuna cook Miss Vilma Mercy Lambie. Assistant director Mercedes Douglas. Directed by Junior Alvarez. Supervision Dr. Oliver Green and Dr. Michelle Goldwasser. Screenplay Erica Zuniga. Assistant engineer Miss Shirley. A production of the Garifuna American Heritage Foundation. United by the president and founder Ms. Cheryl L. Norales and vice president and co-founder Ronnie Figueroa. For more information, visit our website www.garifunaheritagefoundation.org 323-898-6841. This is DJ Labuga. <laughs>